How do you know when a painting is done and when you can take it further? That's what we're going to talk about today. Let's get started. So instead of starting a painting and going all the way through it, I thought what I would do is the end process. I thought this painting was done, and it basically is done, but I didn't feel like it was dark enough. Now, what I mean by dark enough is the time of day. As you can see from the photograph, it's that time of day right before night comes, when the sky can be really, really blue, and it creates a lot of blueness in general. And I looked at the painting, and I thought, yeah, I got all the values right. I got all the shapes right, but it doesn't convey the mood that I wanted it to. So I went back in and said to myself, I need to make things darker. Now, in order to make things darker, it doesn't require putting a second coat on. If I put the second coat on of exactly the same colors, nothing would shift. So what I had to do was take my colors and darken them up. So I had to add a pigment that was going to be dark enough to tip my original color choices. But I also realized I didn't want to dull things down. So in order to do that, you know, one of the things that I think beginning painters do is they grab the gray. And if I did that, then I wouldn't have a colorful painting. So instead, what I did was I mixed up sort of a gray. I mixed up ultramarine blue, alizarin crimson, and a tiny, tiny bit of Naples yellow in order to make a gray. Uh, but that indeed was not even dark enough. I thought it was. But then often what I do is I'll take my paintings upstairs and then later in the day or the next morning I'll get a, a clearer view. And I thought, nope, I haven't quite hit it yet. So I thought, okay, and then I have to do something different. What's darker than ultramarine blue? Well, I had two choices on my palette. There's Prussian blue and there's indigo. Indigo is as dark as my palette will go. And I thought, I may have to go there, but I'm going to sneak up on it. So I started first with Prussian. So that's what I'm doing here. I've added Prussian to my greens. I've added Prussian to my uh, blues. And, um, and the other thing that I've done is there's a lot of orange in my greens. Um, tube greens are never, never satisfactory to me. There's a lot of Viridian in this painting, but it's Viridian cut with ultramarine blue or Prussian blue and then a bit of orange inside. Another reason for the orange is it dulls down the green a little bit, it makes it look like the foliage that's outside right now. It's not new foliage, it's August, and so the foliage becomes duller. But, uh, but it also will tie in subliminally the orange and the yellow that I have going on in the house, where the lights were on in the house. And that's why I wanted to do the painting. I thought, I really like that. I love that time of day anyway, right before dark. It's a very short time. But I didn't quite accomplish my goal yet. I thought that I did. Everything's darkened up somewhat. And I looked through my value finder. I think that's going to come up. And I thought, yep, you did it. It matches the, it matches the, um, the photograph. Not that I'm, a, no, I'm, not, I'm not trying to match the photograph. This is not matchy-matchy painting. But I did want to keep the values the same. Color choices are different, but the values are the same. And then I'm throwing in a little bit of uh, orange because I didn't feel like everything was cohesive enough. So I went to bed, woke up the next morning, and I thought, yeah, yeah, you got it right. And that's probably where you should stop, but I didn't take it far enough. So I thought, well, just me and my house. <laughs> I'm going to take it further. So now I've gone into indigo some more. Again, mixing. I'm, no, none of the colors I saved. What I have to do is mix again. And... But this time, I am adding, instead of my original blue, which was ultramarine blue, I've gone down. I've gone from ultramarine blue to Prussian and now into indigo. So everything's going to be calibrated to be darker than where it was when I initially started and where I initially thought I needed to be. So that's what's happening here. And I'm hoping, I'm hoping it's going to make those oranges pop more and give more a sense of that evening glow that, that I wanted to capture. And in the end, I think it might have. So let's see what happens here. I'm not sure. Yeah, so there's, some, there's that indigo going in. And I don't want to use a lot of it. Indigo can be very dulling. And I still wanted to keep this uh, a colorful painting. So you have to be really careful and just add 
just a tiny bit sometimes to your mixes. The way I do that with a flat brush is I just dip a corner of that flat brush into some pigment and then go back to whatever I've been mixing so I can control things. Because as you know in watercolor, you, can, you can't go back, <laughs> you know, and I'm not using any whiteout. So, you know, once you make a color choice, you, you just got to stand by it. So this, this create, this, I think all, if I'd stopped at stage one, stage two, or stage three, I think, I think I like them all as paintings, but the point was which painting conveyed the mood that I wanted the most. There's the first one. I mean, they're all the same painting, but there's the first stage and it's kind of sunny and I enjoy that painting, but it just didn't go far enough. And then here's the one that I finished with and it conveys more of that time of day. So remember to keep the whites of your paper white, your paints wet, mass for value, mix for color. Please join my YouTube channel and I'll see you next time. Okay, bye.